Have you ever wondered what the Opus Exodus 2400 power station can run around your house for critical backup and grid down situations? These are all the tests you've been waiting for that no one else does on power stations. You're not going to want to miss this video. We have an oops to unbox. Look, they even say it here. <laughs> I think the official brand name is Opus or something like that, but uh, oops is a lot more fun to say. Got a little bag of uh, documentation here. We've got uh, this adapter cable right here, MC4 ends on one side, and then Anderson power pole on the other. I am not sure what gauge wire they're using on these, but this is very, very thin gauge wire going to those MC4 connectors. Got another Anderson adapter to 12 volt uh, cigarette style plug. And we've got the AC charging cord, no power brick. Let's take a closer look at this quick. Nice big screen, it shipped at 66%. We've got two 140 watt power delivery ports and then four quick charge type A ports. It's a very nice selection of USB ports. They've got a little uh, on off uh, toggle switch down here. We've got uh, two barrel type 12 volt sockets as well as one of your standard car style outlets. And we've got four 20 amp, 120 volt outlets. The inverter is rated up to 2400 watts. There's the IOT button. On the side, we have nothing but ventilation. On the back here, we've got a, a circuit breaker. We have our solar DC input. It's rated from 12 to 78 volts. We'll have to see how many amps that to accept. So yeah, the PV input is rated up to 13 amps, 800 watts max. This is not terrible for a power station this size. I would have rather seen closer to a thousand or more, simply because larger units like this usually have heavier loads. And so it's good to have extra solar capability and that way you can offset your loads plus charge the battery on top of it. But without loads, if you're just uh, recharging it, uh, 800 watts isn't terrible. And there's our AC power input. We've got uh, this helpful tip thing that was hanging from this cover. And it says for optimal performance, fully drain and recharge on first use to preserve battery life. And then they recommend charging the battery every three months. And there's nothing on this end. The top of the power station has nothing but QR code for the app, no wireless charging or anything. So all the outputs are on the front side and all the inputs are on the back side. Guys, I just noticed something very nice off the bat here with this oops unit. <laughs> Never gets old saying that. If I turn these USB on, you'll see that it has an estimated time remaining of 73 hours. Now watch this, when I turn the AC on, nothing's plugged in, okay? It's just the inverter. Look what's happening. The estimated time remaining drops. So it looks like their estimated time remaining thing actually is factoring in overhead losses, like idle consumption on the inverter because that dropped substantially when I enabled the inverter. I like that, because that gives you an actual legit idea of how much time you've actually got remaining. It has a surge rating of up to 4,500 watts, and it's a 48 volt battery rated to 2,232 watt hours. It does have an EPS feature where it can help uh, provide an un uninterruptible power supply. However, usually when they say EPS, is not a full UPS. We'll be testing that later. I just plugged it in and it's charging uh, over 1300 watts right now. And uh, the fans immediately ramped up. Let me let you hear how those sound. So they're not obnoxious, but uh, you can definitely hear them. At least they have a low tone to them, which is good. All right, I've got the uh, app here. Let's go ahead and add a device. See if it can uh, find anything. What I probably need to do is go ahead and turn this. There we go. Can you see the Bluetooth and the wireless flashing? So now we should be able to find it. Yep, it found it. So it looks like we've got uh, solar input, grid input, got the state of charge, the temperature. Uh, not sure what uh, four days and three hours is referring to because we are currently dumping basically 1400 watts of power into it. Should definitely not take that long to recharge. And we've got our DC watts out, our AC watts out. We can toggle the DC car port on there. We can toggle the USB ports on there and we can toggle the inverter on. Let's go up here to the little uh, gear icon. Looks like we can change the name. And then we've got uh, an option to do fast charging or slow charging. Let's change it to slow charging. Uh, it says we can only switch the charging modes with the AC inverter off. So let's turn that off. All right, let's go ahead and hit slow charging. So it basically cuts the uh, amount of power going in in half down to 700 watts instead of 1400. We can change the screen timeout time. Uh, default is five minutes. Tapping the eco button. We have two categories. We have AC eco and DC eco. With AC eco, power is zero watts for six hours, then it will shut down. Same thing on the DC eco. That's pretty cool that uh, they let you change the parameters in terms of how many watts needs to be drawn, as well as uh, time. A lot of power stations just have one setting and you've got to go with that. I really like this uh, touch to be able to adjust that uh, yourself. Very cool. 
Uh, but I don't like those features, so I'm turning mine off. Looks like it's just got a little bug because it's saying four days, three hours of runtime, and we're still charging. However, the screen is accurate and tells us an estimated time to fully charge. So I think this app needs a little bit of work just on that uh, particular area. This is my full-size kitchen refrigerator that we use on a daily basis. And what we're gonna do is plug it into this OOPS power station and see how long it runs it for. And we'll go ahead and plug the fridge in. You can see the fridge only pulls about 100 watts, 120 watts. And it is 9.46 p.m. We'll be back in a few hours. It's been a whole day, 11.24 p.m. This Exodus power station from Opus have been, has been running my full-size kitchen refrigerator all this time. And you can see we actually still have 4% remaining, but I want to go to bed. I would like to be able to plug my fridge in and to something that uh, won't die overnight, because uh, this will definitely die overnight. Well, let's just tack on an extra hour uh, of runtime uh, for that uh, additional 4% remaining. So that means this power station ran my full-size kitchen refrigerator basically 27 hours. All right, we have uh, discharged this unit uh, all the way down to 0%. Next, we're going to test and see how fast this can recharge dead to full from the AC wall charger. Note that I have changed it to fast charging in the app. Let's plug it in. And it started, so let's go ahead and start the stopwatch. And I'm gonna put you guys on time lapse, and I'll be back when it's finished. I wasn't right here when it finished, but based on the time lapse, it took one hour and 36 minutes to go from zero to 100% state of charge. This is a high-end desktop gaming PC workstation. Got one, two, three, 4K monitors. We're running a 4K gaming benchmark on that one right now. If we come down here, we can see that the computer is pushing 600 watts uh, consumption. Notice that nothing is plugged in but uh, this white cord, which is coming over here and is connected to this power strip right here. Plugged into that is the charging cable that uh, is plugged into this Exodus power station. And then this cord right here goes back into that uh, mess of cords back there and powers the computer. Let me just show you here that uh, it's going to the plug strip that's right there. I do have a different UPS that that plug strip is normally plugged into, but we're going to test the UPS capability of this Opus power station. Uh, I'm going to flip this switch in three, two, one. So you can see the power has been killed, but uh, the computer is still on, working just fine and the power station took over running the computer. All right, let's apply power back on now and see if it uh, switches successfully. Three, two, one. Okay. I heard it click over, still got the computer. Let's do it a few more times. Cutting power in three, two, one. Everything's still on. And one more time, off. Three, two, one. So this power station has a fantastic UPS. The other crazy thing is this computer is pulling almost 600 watts, really pushing it hard. Look at that. With 100% state of charge, it could run this computer like it's estimating close to three hours. Now we're gonna test and see if this Opus Exodus 2400 can run an electric hot plate. Here we go. 1400 watts, the fans immediately surge up. Let me let you hear that. Not the loudest I've ever heard a power station, but uh, certainly louder than some, but easily able to run that hot plate at 1400 watts. Okay, everyone's favorite test, laundry and heavy surge testing. Place your bets now. Will the Opus Exodus 2400 uh, be able to start the dryer? For anyone who hasn't seen any of my previous testing videos, this is a gas dryer. You can see the 240 volt plug is not plugged in. And if you look back there, you might be able to see the uh, gas line. So the dryer just plugs in with a standard 120 volt uh, outlet. The thing though that makes this test so difficult is taking the wet heavy clothes from zero to 100% requires an incredible amount of surge. This dryer has defeated almost all power stations that I've tested thus far except for two, and both of those were on the same level as this one, so I'm optimistic about this one. The two other power stations that succeeded was the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max and the Anchor F2000. All right, starting three, two, one. Ooh, it struggled. I don't know if you heard that, but it struggled. But it did it. Once it gets going, it's not too bad. Right now, the heating element is on. And now that it's off, you can see it tumbling the clothes. Once it's up to speed, is a walk in the park. 300 watts. But uh, that startup is brutal. But uh, congratulations, uh, Opus Exodus 2400. You're officially in the elite ranks that can start my gas dryer. Let me throw some clothes in the washer, and we'll come back when it's on spin cycle, and uh, we'll watch them both running. All right, we are on spin mode here right now. And uh, if you look, we're pulling 
just over 400 watts, 95% state of charge, estimated time 4 hours. My particular machines really only take like 45 minutes to do a wash cycle and a dry cycle. Maybe if it's heavy, the dryer will run an hour. The point is, is I could probably easily get close to four batches of wash done on one charge of that uh, power station. And that would be four batches washed and four batches dried. I love this size of power station for this reason. They really pack a punch, but yet they're still somewhat movable. You don't need some kind of dolly system or something to move them around. Anyway, great job, Opus. It's hot and muggy today. So we're gonna test and see if this Opus Exodus 2400 can run a 120 volt mini split heat pump. Fired it right up. Let's go see how much power it's pulling. 400 watts and climbing it looks like. Sorry the frame rate of the camera is messing up outside here right now. See how slow it ramps up? That's the super nice thing about mini splits is they just are a super gentle startup. So it's going to kind of surge up here a little ways to get started and then we'll actually see it kind of settle down and uh, not pull as much power. At the moment uh, just shy of 700 watts being pulled right now. So literally five minutes later and you can see it's already settled down uh, to the 530 watt range. It will cycle all the way down even with the compressor running to like low 200 watt range and then it will go all the way up to almost a thousand watts if it's really under load. Now that's the sweet thing about mini split heat pumps is they're just so so efficient. You can see we have a 91% state of charge with an estimated time remaining at this current draw of just over three hours. Now today is hot and humid. We have some cloud cover. Your mileage uh, may vary uh, depending on you know your outdoor temperature and insulation and whatnot but you could easily get a couple hours of relief and comfort running a 120 volt mini split heat pump off an Opus Exodus 2400. Next I have a giant 15,000 BTU portable air conditioner. This thing starts up hard, not nice and smooth like a mini split does. I'm gonna put you guys uh, down here so you can see the screen starting in three, two, one. Ah, did you see that? It surged, but it started it I think. Yeah, it's starting to get cool. This is another really hard thing to start, so kudos to the Opus Exodus 2400. Got this power station connected up to, all well, this yellow cord, a full-size microwave. Should be able to handle this no problem. Started right up. Got some mega fans kicking on, but you can see we're pulling 1600 watts. Listen when the microwave shuts off and we'll hear these fans turn off. It, they're pretty quick reacting. Fast to turn on, fast to turn off. Did you hear that? They immediately ramp up to a really high level and then they slow down really quick as well. At least when the power station's running in short spurts. But uh, it can run a full-size microwave, no problem. Look what I got this power station plugged into now. Well, this cord comes down here and goes straight into this awesome device called the EZ Generator Transfer Switch. This allows me with the flip of a switch right here to take power from this cord, plugging into an outlet right there, and I'm able to power my full-size household gas furnace. This is such a simple product, but makes such a world of difference. I'm gonna leave a link for the video as well as this device down in the description. I think it's a must-have for anyone that uh, uses a gas furnace to keep themselves warm. But let's see if uh, this uh, Opus Exodus 2400 can run this furnace. Got the hot surface igniter and induced draft going. Those things are pulling only 120-ish watts and we have ignition. All right, now the fan is fully up to speed. And if we take a look here, we're hovering right around 440-ish watts of power being consumed. We're not quite full, but uh, we're currently estimated at uh, this draw to run approximately three hours of time. You're actually going to get substantially longer run time because remember your furnace turns on and turns off, turns on and turns off. So there's going to be periods of time where it's not drawing this full amount of power. So as long as your house isn't super, super cold and this is running continuously, you'll actually get a considerably longer run time than just three hours. Let's test and see if this uh, Opus Exodus 2400 can run my full-size vacuum cleaner. And here we go. Oh yeah, that's a piece of cake for it. 1300 watts. New test due to popular request. We're gonna turn the AC inverter on and we are going to let that sit for 24 hours and we'll see how much battery it consumes just sitting idle. I have all the timeouts and everything canceled, so it should just sit there and stay on the whole time. It's 12.57, August 15th. Okay guys, 24 hours later, 12.58. You can see that uh, we were down to 58%, down from 90. So that means this uh, power station just sitting idle for 24 hours consumes 32% of the battery. Okay guys, sound off in the comments on what you think of this uh, power station. I'll admit, uh, I was expecting it to not be as good just because of its more budget offering, but it did a fantastic job. Really clobbered the tests. And you've got some nice things like the 140 watt power delivery port. That's still somewhat rare on a lot of these power stations. Probably my biggest gripe, I would say it's louder than average with its fans and they crank up and respond really quickly to loads that are placed on it. And there's no way to expand it with an expansion battery. 
However, there is a little hack uh, you can utilize going through the solar input. I'll leave a link uh, to that video down below, but essentially you take like, one of these golf cart 48 volt batteries and you feed it in through the DC port, like where you hook up the solar, and then you're able to hook up like an external MPPT solar charge controller to that battery or a whole slew of other things and really expand the capacity and capability of units like this. Guys, I love bringing this content to you and I think it should always be free. I've learned a lot from free content over the years and I think you would agree that you would much rather have free content than paid for content. So to continue to support the free content, please do four free things on your end. Like the video, comment, subscribe, and share. Those are four 100% free things, but they make a tremendous difference to the channel and allow me to continue to bring this content to you free of charge. I've also got affiliate links to uh, this uh, power station down in the description. Please consider using those when you buy your power station. It costs nothing extra to you, uh, but I do get small commissions and that helps continue supporting the free content for you. It's not easy and it takes a lot of time, especially all the tests that I run. I do so much more than your average reviewer that just opens it up and shows you around the outside and says it turns on and runs stuff. I legit show you what it can run. I appreciate uh, your continued support and help of the channel. Everyone stay safe and we'll catch y'all next time.